Hi everyone, this is Adam Virgil, and let's face it, there, there's a lot of different things you can do in Microsoft Excel. The purpose of this video is to kind of streamline that and show you the things that you absolutely need to know how to do so that you can do what you need to do and practice without getting overwhelmed with all this information. And we're going to go over dynamic arrays, which are very powerful. You will need Office 365 to participate in this tutorial. And let's get started. We're going to start with some team snapshot reporting. And in another video, we'll go over reporting over time. But for now, let's start here. And let's go to our data tab to see what we're working with. This is our data. This is how it's organized. We have an athlete's name here, the date in question, the athlete's position, and some metrics. These can be anything as long as they're numbers. We have a heart rate metric. We have player load, let's say it's a GPS metric, RPE, or rating of perceived exertion, and the duration of the session. Now, these, this could be 100 GPS metrics. It could be 100 heart rate metrics. It doesn't matter. So I know a lot of people ask about, oh, do you have any GPS reports, or do you know how to do GPS reporting? It's, it's all the same. They're all numbers, and RPE could be a GPS metric. Heart rate could be another GPS metric. RPE could be another heart rate metric. These could all be well-being metrics for all I care. The first thing that we want to learn how to do is create a unique list of athletes. And to do that, we're going to use a function called unique. But before we start doing calculations, one of the really important things that you'll want to do if you have data in Excel is you'll want to create tables of that information. So if we go back to our data tab, we have all this information, it looks great, we want to create a table. If we click on cell A1, or the top left corner of our table, or of our information, and go to insert, and click table, we'll see our table, or all the information that's next to each other, get highlighted, and my table does have headers with this check here, ours does. Right, we have name, date, position, those, that's the header. So let's click OK. And now we have a table. And a new thing popped up here, a new tab called Table Design. We can click on that, and we can adjust the way that our table looks by clicking on different things, so on and so forth. This is now a table. Its name is Table 2. I'm going to name it DATA in all caps. That's a bad nomenclature. Don't don't do that, but I couldn't think of anything else for now, and I wanted it to stand out since we're doing only things with this table. So the table's name is now data. And what this allows us to do is when we're typing in formulas, if I type in equals and I start typing in data, we can refer to our table. And then when we refer to our table, we can look at the columns that are inside the table. So we have data, and now everything in here is selected. And if we do an open square bracket, we'll see all of our items in here. So if we want to get the average of the heart rate values in this table, we can call this table, call data, and look at the heart rate metric like that. And you'll see that frequently as we go through the next couple of things. So on this plan page, we'll consider this our visualization page, if you will, or our playground where we do our calculations because in reality what you'll want to do is you'll want your data to live in a separate tab than your visualizations and that should live in a separate tab than your calculations that you use for your visualizations but we don't need to discuss that in this video so without further ado let's get started unique list of athletes you can type in equals unique open parenthesis and what this needs is an, is an array. Now we have two ways of getting to our table. The first way is typing in data, which is where our athletes live, and doing what we just did. Or we can go to our table and select all of our athletes and close the parenthesis and click Enter. Now we have a unique list of athletes. That's great, because you know what we can use this for? We can use this for 
a drop-down list, we can use it as just our report. So no matter what, um, if this is our report, we have our athletes here, and we can put data next to these athletes based on what we want. So let's figure out what data we want to display here. The next thing on our list is get average data for each athlete. Let's say that we want to get the average heart rate for each athlete. The way that we can do that is we can use a function called average ifs. Right here in this cell, K4, next to the athlete's name, will go equals average ifs, open parenthesis. Now this time, let's get data from our table without going to that data tab. Say data, which is the name of our table. What do we want to get the average of? Well, you might have a metric that you want to get the average of for each athlete. And in this case, we'll do that open square bracket. Let's say that we want the average heart rate for each athlete. And we can close a square bracket. That's what we want the average of. Now we have to give it criteria. Because we don't want the average of all the heart rates. We just want the average of all the heart rates for the athlete that's in this row. To do that, we can do a comma. Criteria range 1 is going to be the athlete names in the data tab. So we can type in data again, open square bracket, and go to name, close the square bracket. So we want to get the heart rate for all the athletes that meet criteria one, comma, criteria one. Well, what is criteria one? It's this athlete here. Now, if we just select this athlete and close the parentheses and click enter, we'll get the average heart rate for that athlete. But we don't we want this to apply to all the athletes and the way that we do that is we use something called a hashtag sign or a pound sign so when we click on this formula here i want to discuss this is what a dynamic array is where we typed in the formula once and we get a bunch of things back not just one thing but one two three four five six athletes back and it's highlighted with this blue box Whenever you see that, that means that you can use a hashtag sign to make a formula apply to each item in that blue box. For example, right now we do not have any hashtag signs and we're doing this formula for the athlete that is in cell J4. But if we put in the hashtag sign, it is going to apply this formula for each item in that blue box. And if we click enter, now we'll get the average heart rate for each of these athletes. That's pretty cool. And there are a couple of other dynamic array formulas that you need to know about where we can use this uh, hashtag sign. They're unique, the one that we just used. There's sort, there's filter, and a couple of others. But we're not going to go over all of that right now. We're just going to go over the practical stuff for the purpose of what we're doing here. So now we have average data for each athlete. Good. If we wanted this to be a different metric, we could go into this box where we call the thing that we want to get the average for. And instead of heart rate, maybe we want to get RPE instead. And we can click enter. Now we have the average RPEs for each of these athletes. Now, what if we wanted to get the maximum and not the average? Well, average ifs the function that we used, it works the same way as other functions called max ifs, min ifs, sum ifs. And uh, no, not count ifs exactly, but it's similar. So if we copy this formula that we have in here, and let's just paste it right here, and click enter, we'll have the same thing, but we could easily exchange the average for the max. So if we change average to max, and click enter and we're going to use this one max ifs now we have the maximum rpe for each of these athletes the same thing would work for min or sum if you wanted the sum or the minimum for each so let's do sum so if we highlight this copy it and paste it over again they're all interchangeable so we can say instead of max we want to do the sum of the rpe values for each athlete and we can click enter. Now we have the total, um, which might not make much sense in this context, but it might in others when you start combining other variables or interactions with your experience. 
Great. Now, what if we wanted to just get the, what if we wanted to display, we wanted this to be a daily report where we pick a date and we just display the data for each athlete on that date. Let's change these to three different metrics. This metric is RPE, that's fine. And when we do the, and we'll do the other ones after we set up the first one, so we can just copy and paste. All we have to do to get the average RPE for each athlete on a date that we want is we need to add in another piece of criteria to this average ifs formula. So we have a criteria range, which is the name, meeting the criteria, which is criteria one. So the names in our database have to equal the name next to the formula. And also, comma, we'll go data, open parenthesis, date. That's criteria range two, comma. What does it have to be equal to? Well, criteria two is, let's do in quotes, let's go 10 dash um, 20 dash 2019. I don't know what data is in this data set. And we'll close the parenthesis and click enter. And these are their RPE values for that date. Now, if we wanted to select a date, what we can do is we can type in a date in a cell. So let's say this cell, we'll color it yellow and say we want this team report to be for whatever date this is. Let's type in 10, I think it was 25 2019. Oh, it's 20, 2019, but that's okay. Hopefully we have data for 10, 25 also. Instead of having 10, 20, 2019 in quotes, we can have this date in our data set be equal to still criteria two, this date that we type in this cell and click enter. Now we have the data for 10, 25, 2019 for each of these athletes. And if we want, want to do 10-26, dash 2021, where there's no data, 10-26, dash 2019, we'll get some different results. And 10-27, dash 2019, we'll get some different results, whatever their RPE, RPEs are for that day. So if we wanted to have multiple metrics with this framework, we could copy this formula, paste it here, and maybe we also want to display their heart rate. The formula remains the same, and we will change RPE to heart rate, and click Enter. Now we have the heart rate values on this day also. And because in this data set, we just have one entry for each athlete on each date, the average is going to be the metric itself. Likewise, if we changed average to sum, sum ifs in exchange for average ifs, notice the second one is 360, the third is 290, we click enter, the values will be the same because again, there's only one value for each athlete on this date. Now, if you had multiple sessions on a date, if you were to use some ifs instead of average ifs, you would get the sum of both sessions or all three sessions or whatever the case may be. If you use average, you would get the average of those sessions. Same thing, if you use max or min, you'd get the maximum or minimum value of all the sessions that you had for the athlete on that date. The next thing that I wanna do is I want to see if we can figure out how to get these values, not for a date now, we figured out the date thing, we got it for a date. How do we get this over a date range? Well, let's add in another cell. So let's add in a cell right here. I'm copying this and pasting it here. Let's make this a little bigger so we can see it. And I, I like everything to be the same size. So let's just make all these columns uh, 20. So this is a start date. This is the end date. Let's make this one 10 uh, or 11 5, 11 dash 5 dash 2019 and we want to get the values we want to get the average or the sum in between these two dates so how do we do that well we're already very close okay right now with this average ifs formula that we have we are saying we want to get the average rpe for the athlete's name that is equal to the name in the row next to the formula 
and the date that is equal to this date. But now we want to get the average RPE for the athlete's name that's equal to the name in the row when the date is greater than or equal to this date and less than or equal to this date. So to do that, we are going to add in a quote greater than or equal to end quote ampersand. That is how you, after a comma, uh, you need to put the greater than or equal to in quotes with an ampersand um, for, to accept, for Excel to understand uh, what you're trying to do. So that's the first piece of criteria, or that's criteria two. Now criteria three is we want to also have now, or let's just click enter. Now we have the athlete's average RPE, for, we have the average RPE for each athlete when the date is greater than or equal to this date. But we want to get their average when the date is greater than or equal to this date and when the date is less than or equal to this date. So let's add in one more piece of criteria. So our criteria range three, comma, is data, date, and we'll close the square bracket, comma, quote, less than or equal to, end quote, ampersand, and this date. And if we click enter, now we have their RP, average RP between those two dates. And if we change average ifs to sum ifs, we should get the sum of those values. And the way that we know this works is because, so this is a sum of their RPE between these two, two dates. If we extend this date range, this value should go up, right? So let's go 11, 15, 2019, we'll click enter. All of the values should go up because we extended the range and we're taking a sum, right? You might not know that with the average. So great, now we know how to get the sum or the average all we have to do is change sum to average with this formula between two dates. So if you wanted to have a report for the previous seven days, uh, there are different ways to go about this, but the most simple way to do it would, maybe you type in this date here. In this date, you can say equals the date that I type in minus seven. And now no matter what, if we click enter, this will give us the average over the past seven days relative to this date. So if we type in 11 25 2019 now we're getting the average between these two dates if we type in 10 19 2019 now we're getting the average between these two dates and i i think this is towards the beginning of the data set so that's why we have a bunch of zeros and stuff okay next thing is to create a drop down list of these dates so we don't have to type them in and the way that we're going to do that is we're going to use unique again. So let's just, uh, let's go over here and let's get a unique list of dates. And we've already done this. We can go equals unique, open parenthesis, and let's go to our data tab again to practice. We want a unique list of all these dates for our athletes. So let's select this date. And I didn't say what I did before, but I'm holding down control shift and the down arrow to go to the bottom of my table to select all the dates and we'll know that we did it when we see the name of our table with the name of our column in these square brackets. Close the parentheses and click enter. Now we have all of our dates and they don't look like dates because they're not formatted as dates but if we select column O and go to uh, format and format them as short dates now we'll see that they are dates. To create a drop down list of these dates, notice, right, this is an array formula. When we click on it, we see a blue box highlighting all the stuff that falls within this unique formula. We can use a hashtag in our drop down list too. So if we wanted a drop down list of dates to pick from in this cell, we can go to data, data validation, and we want a list here. And our source is going to be wherever we typed in this formula, which is right here, wherever we type in that unique formula, where we got the unique list of whatever it is. In this case, it's, it's dates. So we want O2. And if we click, if we just click O2, uh, if we just click OK when we select that, notice we get a drop down arrow, but there's only one date that shows up. It's only the first one. 
So to get this to accommodate for all of the dates in this list, we just need to use the pound sign. So we can go to data, data validation, and notice we already have our source here, O2. And if we add a pound or a hashtag at the end of it and click OK, now we have a list of all of our dates. And we haven't gone over any of this yet, but the reason why this is so important using these dynamic array formulas is because this is dynamic. Let's see what happens if we add in another date. Notice the last date is 12 9 2019. We'll add data for 12 10. And you know what we'll do? We'll add in a new player called Adam for that date also. So let's go to our data, go to our table, and let's add a guy named uh, Adam, Adam V, and 12 10 2019. And we'll just give him some data. Let's give him a thousand heart rate and two thousand player load, maybe a five RPE and a three thousand duration, just so we know what's going on here. And we can go back to our data viz or our plan. Oh, there's 1210 got automatically added to our dropdown and our unique list of dates. And there's Adam in our list of athletes. Now he has no data in this date range, but if we select 12 10 2019 now we have his rp and the sum of his heart rate which has to be equal to because we didn't do anything with this formula he has no heart rate for the cell j2 which is 12 3 2019 but if we change this to the date that we picked which is l2 so if we change j2 to l2 so now we're looking for the, we're getting the sum of the heart rate for this date, and we click enter. Now we see nobody else has data because nobody else exists on 1210, but Adam has a 1000 heart rate. So that's why this stuff is important is because you pretty much collect your data and based on what you select with dates and stuff, you'll get things automatically updating with these uh, dynamic arrays and such. And before this video ends, I want to go over two, two things. We didn't get into filter yet. We'll get into the filter function a little bit later. And we didn't get into the sort function yet, but I want to show you how to use that because it makes sense here. So do you notice how this list is kind of alphabetically sorted, but not really? Because Adam V, we added him as an athlete and he's on the bottom of the list. If we wanted this list to sort alphabetically, no matter what, and this data will come along for the ride. Notice no, the number five is associated with Adam V. We can add a function called sort on top of this. So right now we're just getting a unique list of names. But if we add the sort function, sort, open parenthesis, all sort needs is an array. Other things are optional, and we'll get into those maybe in later videos. But if we just go sort and close the parenthesis, and click enter. Now our list will always be sorted from A to Z. And you could probably see how this could be powerful, especially when you want things sorted top to bottom. Uh, uh, when you're sorting values top to bottom, it gets a little bit more complex. But at the same time, you can see how sort can be a powerful feature, feature where if you have a daily report and you always want things sorted in the same way, um, it adds consistency, a layer of consistency to what you're doing. And another thing that we'll notice, so we notice that with names, but with dates, right? Again, we just used the formula unique. And because we did that, these dates, they happen to be sorted chronologically. But that's dependent on how we sort our table of data. So if we go to our data and we decide, hey, you know what? Let's sort this data by, sort it by, uh, athlete name and then let's sort it by RPE and then let's sort it by athlete name again um, or whatever the case may be and we go to our plan now these dates are all out of order and because we have our drop-down list being built on top of these dates if we go to our drop-down list all of our dates are out of order to keep everything in order we do what we did with the names here we can say equals sort, open parenthesis, unique, and just let it stay. Close the parenthesis and click enter. 
And now, no matter what, our dates will be sorted chronologically and, in our drop-down list, our selections will be chronological, or they'll be in order so that we can uh, better navigate our drop-down list. And this will become important, especially when we do charts over time. So let me take a second and just say, if you guys could please, if you're enjoying uh, the content, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment. Leave comments below with what I need to cover to help you do what you need to do better. And try not to think of this, because what a, a lot of questions I get are, how do I create a GPS monitoring report? Think, like I said at the beginning, the data in here, this can be GPS, it can be anything that you want. All right, I want you to not think about technology, say, oh, I want to see something like this over time, or I can't figure out how to do that or the other thing. Let me know, and I will do everything that I can to provide you with a video that shows you how to do that. All right, now we're back on this page, and it might look a little bit different. All I've done is I removed everything that was here before. I move the unique dates over here, and I move the unique athletes over here. And here are the two formulas if you want to pause for a second and set this up, because I want to transition to learning about how to do athlete reporting over time. And the purpose of this video, it's going to be a little bit longer, but at the same time, I wanted it to be kind of a hub where you can go to and figure out how to do all of your uh, team snapshot reporting or reporting from a, for a snapshot in time or looking at an athlete over time. So here's how we get our unique athlete names sorted. Here's how we get our unique dates sorted. I removed me, right? Adam V was in the data set before. I just removed me from it. So we know how to get a unique list of dates and we know how to get a unique list of athletes. To look at athlete data over time, the next thing that we need is we need to get the athlete's data for each of these dates. But before we do that, we need to just get the dates for the athlete that we want to look at. So let's do this. Let's treat this as our data area, because this is good practice, is to have your data and calculations in a different area than your visualization, which is also in a different area from your data collection. So notice our data collection is kind of standalone right here. We'll have our calculations and um, our list, our plan list over here. And then we'll have another thing here called our dashboard. Let's call this a dashboard. Um, I don't know what else to call it right now. And ultimately in this dashboard, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to pick, let's call this yellow. We're going to want to pick an athlete name right here. And we're going to want this dashboard of this chart we're going to create a chart and go over it in um, in minute detail so that hopefully you can replicate that chart um, in other areas and build out your entire reporting over time stuff so there's an athlete name that goes here and then this dashboard will be about that athlete now the first thing that we're going to want to need or we're going to want to do is we have a unique list of dates and now we're going to start learning about the filter function, which is also super powerful. And what the filter function does is it essentially puts a filter on a table, right? So in our data, we have a table. And if we just wanted to look at the date 10, 15, 2019, we could use our filter. Uh, dates isn't a good example because it's confusing, but we can pick, let's say October 15th and click OK. Now we're only looking at stuff for October 15th, 2019. That's a filter. And the filter function just does, it does just that. And that's important because what filter do we want to put on this unique list of dates? We want to get a unique list of dates for the athlete that we select, not the unique list of dates for every athlete. Because what if an athlete is traded or they come to us late or their season is different than the other athletes, right? So Let's create a unique list of dates for the athlete that we select. But before we do that, let's create a drop-down list to make it easier for us to pick our athletes. And we've already done this. We did it with the dates earlier in this video. right? We already have a dynamic array of all of our athlete names, so we can use that to create a drop-down list. So if we go to our dashboard in this yellow box, click on this yellow box and go to Data, data validation, 
and we're going to want a list and our source for this list is going to be in our plan and this cell which is the cell where we calculate our dynamic array and remember we're going to have to put a hashtag or a pound sign right after it to get this to get the entire list so if we click OK, now we have a list of all of our athletes right here. Perfect. So let's pick this person, Anthony Davis. And for an example, let's go to our data tab and let's remove a bunch of stuff. Let's say everything through 11.9 we're going to remove. Okay, so let's just remove these rows for that person. Now they only have data starting at 11.9, 2019. So if we go to our plan, these unique dates, they include dates before 11 9 2019 because it's because they're including all the dates for all the athletes. So let's create another little column here. Let's say unique dates for sel athlete selected. And we'll make that bold. And we can copy this formula and paste it here. And let's just make these look like dates so we know what's going on. Now we're going to add in a filter function. So what we'll notice, let's just, after unique with a parenthesis, let's add in filter, open parenthesis. Now I'm seeing why adding data, all capitalized, was probably a bad idea because it's confusing. But notice filter needs an array. You know what else needs an array? Sort needs an array. Unique needs an array. Filter also needs an array. So this is our array, this data date. For all three of these things, we want to get dates. And now what filter does, it says, okay, we get it. You want dates, but which dates or what criteria surrounds these dates? Or what has to be true for uh, to condense this list of dates or increase this list of dates? So let's go comma and include. Well, we only want the dates for the athlete that we select in our dashboard. So for this inclusion criteria, we can say data, which is the name of our table, open square bracket, name, close the square bracket. So the name of the person in our data set has to equal, and we'll go to our dashboard and select this name or the name that we select in our dashboard. So if we close off the parentheses and click enter, now this list of dates starts at 11-9-2019 because the athlete that we have selected only has data from 11-9-2019 through this date. Perfect. It's working as expected. And this is important because if you had all the dates for an athlete that wasn't there for the whole time, then you would have a lot of blank space and it would, it would be cumbersome and not look great. Okay. Now that we have a unique list of dates for the athlete that we selected, we're going to want some sort of data to coincide with these dates to show that data over time. So let's get some data. And we already use this formula, but let's use average ifs. You know, equals average ifs, open parenthesis. And what do we want the average of? Well, we'll go to our data table, open square bracket, and pick a metric, right? Whichever one you want. I'm going to pick heart rate. I want the average heart rate close the square bracket. Now when what is true? Well, there are two pieces of criteria. The first is we want to get the heart rate in our database or the average when the athlete's name in our database is equal to the athlete that we select. So let's do that. Comma, criteria range one is data or a data table, open square bracket, the name, close the square bracket, comma, equal to criteria one, which is if we go to our dashboard, the name of the athlete that we select right here that we pick in this drop down and we close the parenthesis and click enter now this tells us this is the average heart rate in our data set for the athlete that we selected in our dashboard who is Anthony Davis right now but that's not all right we want to get the average heart rate or the heart rate for that person for this date so we need to add in another piece of criteria. So after that, criteria one, we can do a comma. Now criteria range two is going to be the data open square bracket date in our data set. Close the square bracket, comma, equal to, 
or is equal to this date here. And if we just click enter, now we have the average heart rate in our data set for the athlete's name in our data set that's equal to the athlete that we pick in our dashboard and for the date that is equal to this date right here. And because this is a dynamic array, we can get this formula to apply to each of these dates by adding the hashtag or the pound sign after this J2. If we click enter, now we have this athlete's average heart rate data for all of their dates and it stops on the last date. Perfect. We're near, I mean, we're, we're accomplishing things here that will be very, very valuable. So let's just call this, let's just call this heart rate for now so that we know what it is. And maybe we'll, we'll spread these out a little bit. Um, yeah, it's fine. Okay, so now let's create a chart. So let's go to insert, chart. Wow, that's cool. It kind of knew what we were going to do. And that looked good, right? We have a we have a chart with all the all the heart rate. Excel's pretty smart. It, it kind of knew what we wanted. It, all the dates, all the values. Cool, we have this data over time. So what happens if we add in some more data for that athlete? Right? So let's go to our data and see what happens. Um, let's add in a couple of rows. Let's add in this many rows. And I'm gonna copy this athlete's name and paste it in. And let's say this is 11, 8, 2019, 11, 7, 2019, 11, 6, 2019, 11, 5, 2019, and 11, 4, 2019. And we'll copy their position over. I'm just going to color all these in yellow so that we know that these are added. You don't have to do this, but this is for demonstration. Let's just copy these values here and, and, and paste them in so that um, we have some data. So we added all these rows, right? One, two, three, four, five rows. Now let's go look at our chart. Let's go to our plan. All right, it looks like um, we have data, right, for 11 and 4 now um, and for the dates that we added. But what happens when we scroll to the bottom? Oh, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 pieces of information missing. So now it stops at 12.4, not at 12.9. The reason why I did that is because if you just create a chart, it's not going to be dynamic. It's not going to update based on the data that you have. One way to do it is to go in and select data and update this range every time that you add data or remove data. Same thing with the dates, you'll have to update them. And that's not feasible, that's not exciting, especially if you change an athlete with a different number of dates, you're gonna have to change the chart every time you change an athlete. So that's not helpful. Now to make this chart dynamic and responsive to added data, what we can do is we can use something called named ranges. To create a named range, we can go to formulas, oops, click off of the chart, go to formulas, name manager. Right now we see our table, which is called data, and we can do new, and let's call this dates, call it dates. Now this named range, what is now this refers to is saying what is included in this named range. We could select, hey, we want this named range to include these cells, J2 to J11. That won't be dynamic either, because whatever is in these cells will be what our dates are, quote, or I'm quoting with my fingers, what our dates are. But we want this to include all the dates in our dynamic array here. So to do that, it equals the first cell in our dynamic array, or this is where we typed in our formula, and a hashtag or a pound sign. And you will see this equals plan exclamation point at the beginning. That's just the name of our sheet with the exclamation point at the end. That's nomenclature uh, or syntax in Excel. If you had a tab with multiple words in it or spaces, you would see little um, single quotes like this around them. Um, that's one of the reasons why I don't have spaces in my in my names is because I don't like dealing with those single quotes it's just one other thing to think about so we have the name of our sheet exclamation point the cell where our dynamic array is with a pound or a hashtag sign and if we click OK now we have a named range called dates let's add in another one and this will be our data it'll be our heart rate data so we'll go new and we'll call this named range heart rate 
and this will be equal to this cell, which is the dy dynamic array for our heart rate data, with a hashtag or a pound sign, and click OK. Now we have two named ranges. Great. Let's apply them, or let's figure out how to apply them to this chart. So let's close this, and we'll click on our chart, go to Select Data, and we'll notice if we edit our heart rate range, it is set to K2 to K32. We could expand this range to include more data, and that would be what updating the chart is. Um, but then if we add more data, remove data, this would not update. So we're going to use our named range. The way that we call our named range is first we call the sheet that our named range was created on, which is our plan sheet, right? That's where our formula is for our named range, is it's on this plan sheet with an exclamation point. And again, if you have a space, you'll need to use those little um, single, single tick marks around, I believe it's around the entire thing. But we do not have spaces in our name, so we do not need those tick marks. And then we just give the name of our named range. So we named it heart rate. And click OK. And click OK. Oops. Uh, and now, let's click on this series. And let's see what data we're looking at now. Oh, well, now the heart rate data covers this, all the heart rate data, right? So our named range is working. It's covering whatever is in this blue box or our dynamic array. Perfect. Why did we, well, we created two dynamic arrays because if you notice, this data is not showing up on the chart, right? It still ends at 12.4, not 12.9. That's because we need to update our axis. So if we select data, edit our axis, Again, our axis is set to these numbers. If we go equals plan or the name of our sheet with an exclamation point and then the name of our named range, which is dates, and click OK, click OK. Now we have all of our data, right? It goes all the way through 12.9. Perfect. Let's, let's just copy this chart and, and paste it in our dashboard for now so that we can kind of see it. Cool. So now, Right, we have data on 11.4, and what happens if we remove the data? Right, so we added this data, now let's remove it. Let's remove it. 11.4 through 11.8, it's gone. If we go to our plan, whoop, our chart just flipped around. Now we have data starting on 11.9, and there is no blank afterwards, right? So it's not including what was it. We had five extra data points before. Now it's adjusting to our dynamic array. Perfect. That's what we want. So now we have a dynamic chart that will, this person was only here from 11.9 to 12.9, uh, to but if we select someone that was there for a little bit longer, we'll get their data and there won't be any empty space. Except, this is actually something important to go over, you'll see some empty spaces in here. Why are there, there empty spaces there? Well, if we look at our data set, let's go to that G Kempo fella. We have data on 10, 15, 16, 17, then 20, right? We skipped a couple days, 21, 23, we skipped a day. That's why those blanks are there. If we go to our dashboard and we see these blanks, this axis is being treated as dates. So any date that doesn't have data for it, regardless of whether it's in your date list, will show up as blank. The way that you, if you don't want blanks to show up, we can edit this axis, so we'll format it, and format it as a text axis. And when we do that, now there are no blanks, regardless of how many days are between data points. So this is a personal thing. It's context dependent. I don't know what you'll want to choose. If you choose a date axis, you'll have blanks for dates that don't exist. Um, if, you issue a if you do a text axis, it'll just display um, whatever, whatever is here, whatever is here, regardless of whether there are gaps in between um, dates. Great. Now we have this this chart, which is which is pretty cool. I'm I'm going to keep it a date axis for now. Um, so let's keep it a date axis for now. Go to our plan. Now we have a dynamic chart over time for an athlete. Now this is a lot of data, right? The longer an athlete stays with you, the more data you're going to have. 
What if you wanted to control the dates in this chart? Say, hey, I just want to see the past 14 days pretty much all the time. Maybe I'll want to extend it, but more or less, like this is too much data. I just want to see what's happening recently. Well, let's add a, let's add a start date. Let's say start date and end date. And I'm going to, I'm actually going to move this down because I'm going to add something else a little bit later. So let's end date over here. Let's make these two um, yellow boxes. Let's make them a little bit longer or whatever let's type in a start date let's say it's 11 uh, 10 2019 and 11 24 2019 so two weeks how do we get this data to only show the data between these two dates well we can adjust our dates in our plan right here right now we want to get all of the dates and remember, we're using filter, which allows us to add criteria to this list of dates. And we said we just want to get all the dates for the athlete's name when the for the athlete's name that we select in our dashboard. Now, if we want to add more criteria, we don't add a comma because if we add a comma here, it'll move on to the next argument, and it says, okay, now what do you want to do if it's empty? We don't want to do that. We want to stay in this include area. We want to include more things. And the way that we do that is we use parentheses around the arguments that we make. So this is one argument. So let's put a parenthesis before data name equals dashboard D2. Put a parenthesis after. And then we'll do an asterisk, which is an and operator. So you can use and, or, or, if that makes sense. In our case, we want to use and. We just want all of the data for when the athlete's name in our database is equal to the athlete that we select and when the date is in between those dates that we pick. So let's open a parenthesis and go data, open square bracket, date, close the square bracket, and we'll go equals one, close the parenthesis, asterisk, or multiplication, open parenthesis, data, open square bracket, date, close the square bracket, equals one, and close the parenthesis. Now we don't actually want, so what this is saying now, saying let's get all the dates for when the athlete's name is equal to the athlete that we select and when the date is equal to one and when or the date in our database is equal to one and when the date in our database is equal to one that's not what we want but that's what this is saying so i wanted to leave this here so you could see it where there are parentheses around this argument an asterisk parentheses around this one an asterisk and that's how you add arguments together but we don't want the date to be equal to one. We want the date to be the first piece of, or the second piece of criteria is we want the date to be greater than or equal to not one, but let's go to our dashboard, the start date that we pick. And then the other piece of criteria is we don't want the date to be equal to one. We want it to be less than or equal to not one, but the end date that we pick. So now we're saying, get us all the dates, I'll get us all the unique dates for the athlete that we pick in cell D2, and when the dates in our database are greater than or equal to the date that we pick here, and when the dates in our database are less than or equal to the date that we pick here, which is giving us all the dates for the athlete that we pick in between that date range. If we click enter now our dates shrank to be all the dates in that date range and because these are dynamic arrays we have okay our, our data is now tying in with these dates and only these dates so we're adjusting how much data we have and because we made our chart use our named ranges that are dynamic arrays our chart displays only the data for whatever's being controlled by our dashboard which are these dates um, and the data, data associated with them. So if we go to our dashboard now, well, there's our data. And we can on the fly say, oh, you know what? Actually, maybe I just want to see the past, past uh, or 11.10 to 11.17. And there we go. And maybe I want to see a different athlete, right? Oh, well, there we go. I want to see this athlete. Okay. So now we have a dynamic chart. And we have a way to control our date range for the athlete that we pick. The next thing that we're going to want to do 
And this is the last thing that we're going to go over, and hopefully this gives you enough tools to do almost, um, actually we're going to do two other things, but hopefully these two things will give you most of the stuff that, that, that you need to do here. So one thing that we might want to add is some sort of average of sorts, or it could be anything, but some other thing on this chart that is more of like a team average or an athlete average or whatever that may be. Let's figure out how to do that. Let's go to our plan. Um, and let's add in another metric here. And let's call this average. I don't know whether it's going to be a team average or an athlete average, but it's important that this is a dynamic array and it aligns with each of these dates so that it takes up the same uh, number of, so that it fits on the chart nicely. For example, if you had an average that, that goes all the way down to here, then you're going to have a line going past the number of dates and there's going to be white space underneath it and Anyways, you need it to be dynamic, just like everything else. So to get this athlete's average, it depends on what you want to get. Okay, I'm going to do it in a couple of different ways so that you can decide what you want to do. The most simple thing is to just get the athlete's average. And the way that you can do that is you can go equals average ifs, open parenthesis. What do we want to get the average of? We go to, let's say, we want data, open square bracket. Heart rate, close the square bracket. So we want to get the average heart rate, comma, when data, open square bracket, name, close square bracket, comma, is equal to this athlete that we pick in our in our dashboard. If I can actually, come on, let me go up. Oh, man. That's okay. We'll have to do it in, in, uh, in two goes. Because it wouldn't let me select that cell. So let's go to our dashboard and why is it my arrow keys aren't working? I don't know why they're not working. Anyways, I'm trying to select cell D2. Okay, great. So now we have the athlete's average. But this is not dynamic. And how do we even make this dynamic, right? We're not getting it for a date or whatever it might be. The way that I do this, it's a workaround solution, but what I'll do is I'll say if, so I had an if statement before this, if, open parenthesis, if this cell right here with a hashtag, so if the cell in this row for this dynamic array equals quote, quote, if it's blank, comma, let's make this quote, quote, or blank. If not, comma, let's do this average ifs thing, or get the athlete's average, and close the parenthesis and click enter. Now we turn this average into a dynamic array for the number of dates that we have. So we can display this on the chart with the athlete's data. But before we do that, we need to create a named range, right, like we did before. Let's go to formulas, name manager, new, we'll call this average, and it's equal to plan L2 with a hashtag because it's a dynamic array now because we use this little hashtag thing. And we'll click OK. Done. And let's add that average bar to this chart. And it won't show up on the other one, but let's go to select data. Let's add a metric. Let's call this uh, av average. And remember how to do this? So we go equals plan exclamation point because that's the name of our sheet with an exclamation point after it. And the name of our named range, which is average. If we click OK, now we have a bar, and maybe we want this bar to be. Uh, we can we can do a we can do that access, but we don't need it. Let's change this. So let's format this or change this series to chart type. Let me change it to a uh, to a line. I don't know. Uh, I don't know what'll look good there. Fine. Now we have an average line. Great. And it's dynamic, right? So if we were to add, let's see, let's copy this chart. Uh, oh, I just shouldn't have removed it. Let's keep it there. But let's, now we need to exchange it, right? So let's paste it in here. And, um, and let's say, okay, now we want to look at all up until 11-24, 2019. And the average line will continue to go across. Now what this is, in, but what if we make this, let's see, 11-21, 11-22? 11, 21, 
So what we're doing now, we, we have an average, right? But this average is for the athlete's entirety in the data set. So notice we have a very small range and this average line is not in between these two values. Now, if you wanted to calculate an average in between the two, uh, in between the date range that, that you have, we can do that too. So we'll see what happens when we do this, right? So we have this chart. Let's go to our data or our plan. This average is not in between those two numbers. If we want to make it in between those two numbers, um, we can add in some more criteria. So right now we want to get the average of the heart rate when the name in our database is equal to the name of the athlete that we select, comma, for criteria range two. We can, it's just like what we did for the unique dates in the filter, but in a different way. So, so go data, open square bracket, date, comma, quote, greater than, equal to, end quote, ampersand, just like we did in the very early stages of this video. So the date has to be greater than or equal to the start date, comma, and also the data, open square bracket, date, comma, has to be less than or equal to, end quote, ampersand, the end date. So what are we saying here? We are saying we want to get the average heart rate in our data set for when the name in our data set is equal to the athlete that we pick in cell D2, and when the date in our data set is greater than or equal to whatever is in H2, which is where we pick our start date, and when the date in our data set is less than or equal to what is in cell H3, which is where we pick our end date in our data set. And if we click enter, now the average is based on this date range. So it should fall right in the middle of these two numbers, right? And our chart looks different. Our chart looks different. So that's how you get the average within a date range. Now, if you wanted to do the team average, all you would do in this formula is you would remove the player aspect of it, right? So I'm trying to I want you to understand what's going on here, right? We're getting the average with these conditions. Now, what if we remove the name being equal to the name of the athlete, right? Now, we're saying we want to get the average heart rate in our data set when the date is greater than or equal to the start date that we picked and the date is less than or equal to the end date that we picked. So that means we're getting the average heart rate for all of the athletes in our data set between those two dates, which means essentially we're getting the team average. If you wanted to, and you had positions, you could add a piece of criteria that said when the data, uh, or let's, let me just click enter. So that's a team average for those uh, between those two dates. If we wanted it for the positions, we could have the, add in another piece of criteria for criteria range one, we could say data, open square bracket, position, and I don't have the position of the athlete right now, um, anywhere, but I could do comma, quote, uh, guard, and do another comma. So now I'm going to get the guard position average. I don't know if I have any guards in this data set, but if I click enter, oops, this should be data date. Now this is the guard average. If I wanted to get it for the athlete's position, sorry, I'm going down, a, I didn't expect to do this, but I'm getting into it now. Let's get the position for the athlete that we picked, and let's put it on the dashboard. Um, so the position of the athlete, we can use something called XLOOKUP, which is another new function, and I want to go over it. So the, the primary purpose of this is using new Office 365 features to get stuff that you want. So go equals XLOOKUP, which is a new function. It's just like VLOOKUP, but more dynamic, and it's just like index and match, essentially, but a little bit easier to use. So the lookup value, what do we want to look up? I'm going to look up this athlete's name, and I want to find their position. So I want to look up that value, comma, the lookup array, or where am I going to find this athlete name? If we go to our data set, we'll say data, open square bracket, name, close the square bracket, comma. That's our lookup array. Now what do we want to return? So when we find this athlete's name in our data set, what do we want to bring back in the same row? that this athlete's name is in. Well, we want data, open square bracket, position. So we want to find the, the athlete's name in our data set and bring back the position in that row. And if we close that square bracket and close the parentheses and click enter, 
we know their position. So now, if we wanted this average line to be for whatever position this is, which is the position of this athlete, if we go to our plan, instead of typing in guard manually right here, we can change that guard and make it equal to, let's go to our dashboard, this cell, which is the position of the athlete that we pick. And click enter, and we'll notice that nothing changes. But if we choose a different athlete with a different position, let's see what positions we have here. Guards, wing. So Jason Ratham is a wing. So if we go to our dashboard and we select Jason Ratham, now we have wing, and this is the wing average now displayed. If we go to our um, plan, now the average is different. All right, I, what, I didn't think that I would get into that. Um, but anyways, uh, so hopefully through these couple of minutes, you have almost everything that you need to create the average uh, that you want. And remember, this could be a maximum, it could be a minimum, it could be a sum. Um, I'm not going to go into z-scores or anything like that, um, but it is. So that's okay for now. The last thing that I want to do, and this is the most complex thing, so I want to save it for last. Let's actually extend this range out again so, so we have some more data to work with. What I want to do here is I want to make this metric dynamic. Right now, we said we want heart rate. That's what we said. We want heart rate. We told it exclusively. We want to get the average heart rate for when the athlete's name in the or for when the name in the data set is equal to the athlete's name that we pick and the date is equal to this date. But what if we wanted to pick our metric? Well, let's go to our dashboard and let's set up a spot to do that. So let's say metric and let's put in a yellow box here and we'll create a drop down list just like we did for the names for our metrics and we'll set that up in our plan area so let's add in a couple of columns here and we'll call this i'll just call it unique metrics okay how do we get a unique list of metrics well let's use that unique function right that should work so we'll go equals unique open parenthesis. Now, where do we get our metrics from? Well, let's go to our data tab and let's get our headers. And if it says hashtag headers here, that means that if you add more headers to this table, so if you add more columns, it'll update and include those in your list or in this formula. And if we close the parenthesis and click enter, well, we get an error, spill. What's going on there? Let's look. Well, it's trying to go this way. Right? We selected things horizontally. We haven't done that before. And now it's saying, hey, listen, like there's no room to spit these things out horizontally. So tough luck. We're going to give you an error. The way that we get around that, it, well, there are a couple of ways. But if we want them to go vertically, we can use a function called transpose. And actually, if you just type, I'm going to type in one, two, three. And if we copy these cells here and we paste special, you may have seen this before. There's a transpose space paste special. If we do it, it inverts them or um, it flips their orientation around. And that's essentially what we're doing, right? So we're having uh, stuff is going horizontal. We want it to go vertical. So we're just going to add that tra a transpose function on this. So we want a unique transpose open parenthesis and close the parenthesis. So we want get a unique list of the headers but we want to transpose them and if we click enter now we have them in a vertical list great now we can use this as a drop down list just like we've done before let's go to our dashboard and go to data data validation gets make a list and the source is going to be let's go to our plan select the start of our, or where we put our formula in, which is J2 in our plan, hashtag, right? Because we want all the items in the list in this dynamic array. If we click OK, now we have a list of items. One important thing here, right? We should be able to pick any item and that's fine. It looks like it works. But text will not work. Only numerical values will work for this. Right? Like, so how are you going to display, like if you have availability status and you have full, uh, limited, out, or whatever it may be, you can't display that numerically 
over time unless you create a number out of it which would be a different metric in this list but like so if you select name and this is an interactive thing where you can select a metric uh, this chart won't work so it has to be a number so let's select heart rate for now let's just keep it as is and let's figure out how to make this dynamic so if we go to our plan We're going to have to adjust this formula right here. And if we wanted to, I'm not going to go over the average. Maybe I will. Maybe I will. Maybe I won't. But we're going to go over this at the very least to make this dynamic. Instead of telling it what metric we want, we're going to use index and match. I believe we could also use uh, X lookup, but right now I'm thinking about index and match. So average ifs, and we'll do index, open parenthesis. And this is essentially, we're giving it an, an array, which is um, a potential value that could go in this cell. So all the, because we don't know which metric we're going to pick, let's go to our data set. And, and I'm, I'm going to show you this in two ways, right? So let's select our entire data set, which is just data. We don't know what's going to go in here, so we're just going to select it all. And you could do that, right? Imagine we didn't go to our data set. We could just type in data, and then we'd get everything in this data set. And that'll include if we add more columns, they'll be incorporated as well. So we want to get some number or something in here, but we don't know what yet because we need to determine that. And the way that we determine that is generally with index, you give it a row to get and a column to get. So if we wanted to get um, this 200 value, we would give it row one two even though it says three here it's the row two in our index right because we start here so we go one two and we get column one two three four so if we typed in two comma four oops comma two comma four then we would get that piece of data but that's not what we want we are we don't need a row number because our row is being determined by this criteria, right? The row is going to be what coincides with the name of the athlete the, uh, and how that aligns with the athlete in our database and the date and how that aligns with the date in our list in our plan. So we're going to do a comma and skip over that row. And now we're in the column. The way that we determine our column is that it has to be dynamic. And we're going to use a function called match. So let's go match, open parenthesis, look up value. So what do we want to look up to figure out which column to get? And what we want to look up is this here, whatever we type in here, or whatever we select here, comma. And where are we going to find it? What's the lookup array? The lookup array is our headers. So we want to find the order of that metric that we picked in our headers, and that'll determine the column that we get. So right now we have heart rate. And what that's going to do is it's going to say, all right, let's find heart rate. And heart rate is column one, two, three, four. So let's look in column four for the data that we want. And the row that we want is going to be based on the name of the athletes and the date um, that we already have defined. So let's do comma zero because we want the header that we select to be an exact match to our column headers. And we'll close the parentheses, two of them, and do a comma. So before I click enter, what we're saying is we want to get the average of something in our data set. And that something is going to be determined by the header that we pick in our dashboard, which is right now heart rate. So we want to get the average of the heart rate currently based on for the name in the database of the athlete's name that we select on our dash dashboard and for the date in our database that aligns with um, the dates uh, in our the date in question in our in our plan if that makes sense. And if we click enter nothing changed, but that's what we want. So now this is a dynamic variable. Right now it's heart rate and let's actually make this cell equal to um, whatever we pick here so we know what we're looking at. Right now it's heart rate. But what happens if we change this metric, right? Let's change it to RPE. I mean, the average line doesn't make sense, so let's fix that. But we notice the metric changes. So let's do the average line next so it makes sense. 
And if we go to our plan, we notice that these numbers are now the RPE numbers because it's dynamic. It's based on what we picked. What we can do here is we can literally copy this index and match stuff. So all the way through, so we're going to copy index, this data, match, headers with the parentheses, and we'll copy that. And what we're going to do in this average formula is we're going to replace this data heart rate, because that's our specific metric that we wanted to look at, with this dynamic orientation. So let's paste it in, which says index, data, match, all this stuff. So just I just want to stay here for a second so you can pause it and see what it is. Um, I'm going to hold down Alt and Enter to change lines so you can see. In this, the average ifs, it, it's an open parenthesis to start the formula, and then you have this index and match, whatever's in here, and then the rest of the stuff. And if we click Enter, now the average is also dynamic based on the metric that we select. So if we go to our dashboard, here we have this, this new average line, and if we pick a different metric, let's say it's player load, the average will change, the number, the metrics will change. And if we select a different athlete, the athlete will change and their metrics will change, right? So we can change the dates now, so 1, 2019, so on and so forth. So I know that this video was long, but I hope that it gave you some insights and tools and most of the tools that you might need to do your reporting uh, in Microsoft Excel, at least if you're using Office 365. And again, please like the video and subscribe to the channel if it's helpful for you. Um, I'd really appreciate that. And leave a comment below. If there's something that you need help with or you can't figure out how to do and I haven't covered it, let me know and I'll do my best to provide a video that, that goes over that, especially if multiple people have the same question. But again, I hope that this was helpful, and I really appreciate you watching. Thank you so much. Don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions, and I'm sure I'll see you in another video.